So Sony raised the price of its PS5 in the select markets due to challenging economic conditions. And now Xbox and Nintendo have responded. Ryan said the company had to make a difficult decision due to high global inflation as well as currency fluctuations. But how true can that be when you see Xbox and Nintendo's response? So the price is going up in Europe, the UK, Japan, China, Australia, Mexico and Canada. Which honestly is most of their gaming market isn't it? I mean damn even the home market of Japan isn't spared. Obviously with the Quest going up and the PS5 going up in price we wondered if Xbox and Nintendo would follow suit. After all inflation doesn't just affect Sony. But thankfully though Nintendo had previously said they had no plans of raising the switch prices. And when asked in a window central interview to respond to Sony's move, Microsoft was like, nah, it's not happening. So the exact quote was, we are constantly evaluating our business to offer our fans great gaming options. Our Xbox Series S suggested video price remains at $299, which is 250 pounds or 300 euros. And the Series X is $499, which is 450 pounds or 500 euros. Obviously, this doesn't mean Xbox and Nintendo aren't gonna raise their prices at some point, but they wouldn't have said anything if they were planning on raising them in the near future because that would cause so much backlash. So it's Sony being the only one to raise the prices on their next gen consoles. Does that mean inflation affecting Sony more than Microsoft and Nintendo? Probably not, no. Obviously Microsoft can take more of a hit than Sony can. Microsoft is a two trillion dollar company compared to Sony being a hundred billion dollar company. And Nintendo just doesn't change the prices of anything, even the older games. Even with all that, Sony is still the market leader in consoles excluding Nintendo who does whatever they want. So they don't actually need to raise their prices and they even reportedly started making a profit on the PlayStation 5 disc drive version. I think this is honestly just pure greed because obviously with the past two years with the Rona, gaming skyrocketed as an industry, you know? More people were at home playing games all the time. Obviously now that everyone is opening up, people aren't playing games as much so gaming revenue across the board is down. Not just PlayStation, Xbox as well, probably Nintendo as well although I don't know, Nintendo has a Switch which is a uh, portable console and Sony just want to keep a piece of that pie, they want to keep their gaming revenue at the COVID highs. So obviously this is Sony as the market leader getting cocky. They're like yeah people are still going to buy our console because we are the best selling console. We are the best system people want. So obviously we can charge them a little more on the games and and the console itself. Inflation be damned, cost of living crisis be damned, we're gonna make them pay more. And obviously looking at the markets that have had a price increase, those are the markets where Sony doesn't really feel much competition. Literally everywhere except the US, Sony is basically killing it. Even with them making more and more anti-consumer moves, they're killing it. So they don't need to worry, but if they did the same in the US and raised their prices, they would likely lose customers to Xbox and they don't want that. Microsoft has already reported that in the last three quarters, they have outsold Sony. They don't want to poke the sleeping bear anymore. I imagine in Microsoft HQ, they are high-fiving each other and clapping here this news from Sony though because now they can say Xbox not only has the cheapest entry point into the next gen markets with their Series S but with the Series X they have both the most powerful and the most affordable of the higher next gen systems. Honestly I don't know what Sony was doing with this. Like, it makes no logical sense. And the PR nightmare Sony has to endure being compared to Meta, is it worth it? This is PS3 Sony who are cocky and think they can do whatever they want without any issues. And they'll see that the consumers eventually will turn against them like they did Microsoft in the Xbox One era. I'll be honest, I myself have been looking to get myself a PS5. I've already got my computer, I've already got my Xbox, now I want a PS5 as well so I have a complete system and eventually I'll get a Switch. But if the price is going up, mm, I don't see any reason for me to do it honestly. I might just wait a few years and get the base model for cheaper when it eventually goes down or you know buy it second hand because frankly I don't want to support Sony's business practices if, it, if this is what they keep doing it if we keep giving them the money they'll think it's okay and they'll keep doing it I just don't know that's not for me anyway that's my titanic take on the situation let me leave you guys with a gaming fact of the week did you know the first console with touch controls was released in 1984 and it was the Vectrex gaming console I bet you didn't know that, eh? Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and we'll catch y'all next time.